You think you've looked at every last small crossover. No, you didn't. This is the Mitsubishi Eclipse Cross, and don't you forget it. For the right price, Mitsubishi will sell you a turbocharged all-wheel drive crossover with the same great warranty as a Hyundai. That Eclipse name promises big performance. The style is not your cookie-cutter crossover design. And the 2022 model right here is a big refresh. So yeah, you're not done car shopping, and after this video, you may be sitting pretty in a new Mitsubishi. I just want you to look good. At CarGurus, we all do. And while cars are in tight supply all over the country, let us be your guide to the best deals. Subscribe. The Eclipse Cross was a wild little thing in 2018. It came out of nowhere, and it certainly wasn't for everyone. The 2022 model cleans up some of the crazier elements that didn't work and adds more appealing details. This is a longer car, more than five inches total in length. And where does that all go? Primarily at the front and rear, these overhangs. The overhangs are the section of the vehicle that's just before and after these wheels. So they just lengthen this and they lengthen it back there. It just makes it look less stubby, a little bit more proportional. It's the exact same wheelbase as before. What they've done in the front though, it has the same kind of wedges and cool look, but now the headlights have moved from here to the stacked LEDs here. This up here is actually just running lights. Pretty cool, it's really thin. They added just some new blacked out trim, changed the lower valence here, and once you look at that, nice little red trim there on the SEL, I think it looks pretty. Kinda like a Lamborghini Urus. Don't laugh, it kinda is, the whole kind of wedge shape going on, but the wheels are probably a little too small. These are 18s, 16s come standard. I think a Mitsubishi made like a rally art trim, upsize the wheels, 19s, lower it, put some spacers on there. They could do it, they could get away with it with looking like this. The most improved award goes to the tailgate because there's no more split window glass that used to run here. Made the whole car look stubby and kind of like the Pontiac Aztec did. That's not really a car anyone really wants to remember. I don't care how cool you think Walter White was driving around in Breaking Bad. It's not cool, folks. It's not going to be. But the Eclipse Cross did a decent job. These taillights look nice, even the lower valence here. It's fake carbon fiber, but if you're going to do fake, do it right. I like it. The side profile is unusual, but it works. The chrome window trim is askew. It's like a roof on a modern home. On a small car though, you need this drama on the body. It works. Mitsubishi used to make really fast rally cars and sports cars. And some of that excitement does carry into the Eclipse Cross, but not so much behind the wheel. First impressions. The seat feels too high and the steering wheel feels too low. Can't really adjust this, I'm just 5 foot 11, that's pretty average for a guy sitting in a crossover, and I know I'm going to sit up higher in a crossover, but it just gives you that extra feeling of top heaviness. In a car that's supposed to be sporty, it's just a little bit uncomfortable, a little bit unsettling really, before I even start the engine. But let's actually do that, because maybe I'll feel a little different. I drove this car all week without knowing it had a turbocharger. I had to look up the specs. That's actually good because the power actually comes on really smoothly. There's not much lag at all, very linear. It's also kind of bad because there's not that much power. It's only a one and a half liter inline four with 152 horsepower and 184 pound feet of torque. So there's not much to work with, but thankfully the CVT, that's the continuously variable transmission, it's a good one and it's got eight gear ratios on it they're simulated, of course, to act like real gears, and they do a really good job of actually keeping this engine in the power band. Engine braking is really good. Put it into fifth. That's not actually fifth. That's not how CVTs work, but if you're driving this, you could really be fooled into thinking it's a conventional automatic transmission. Most CVTs of any class don't perform this well, so Mitsubishi has that down pat. And this is one of the heavier trims coming in about 3,500 pounds before putting in any other people and cargo and stuff. So it doesn't really move all that great compared to some of the competitors, especially the 1.6 liter turbos in those Hyundais and Kias. Those are much better. Off the line, this car moves, but then it does kind of peter out, right? It's kind of like eating out at an average restaurant. You know, the meal was good, you got what you expected, but you're not getting anything more. Satisfying though, 
And going down a hill like I'm doing now, it holds it nicely, responds even on the upshift, so kind of surprising. And the engine's not really thrashy. It gets a little loud, but it's generally pretty smooth. Mitsubishi has a long history making turbo fours, so it's actually pretty good. I'm gonna talk about the gear shift paddles again, because they're real paddles. And they're metal. Gosh, you don't get that even in the highest priced Mercedes. Mitsubishi has this. They actually spent real money on this part. I like that. They're mounted in the steering column, just like you'll find in Italian sports cars. So, kind of surprising? Unnecessary? I don't know, I like that. The suspension's a little soft, you know, so I, and because my seat is so much higher, I feel like I just am up on the center of gravity when I really should just be a little lower. So I feel like I kind of roll a bit more. I think it's more accentuated by the seating position than the suspension entirely, but in general, it just doesn't really grip or corner as well as some of the cars that are out there. Now, I remember Mitsubishi, and many of you might, from the 90s. That's when they were really pioneering things. Super all-wheel control, active yaw control. That was stuff on the Lancer Evolution, which for the longest time we couldn't buy in the United States. You could only drive that car in Gran Turismo on the PlayStation. I remember doing that. I had an Evo with the, you know, the red Marlboro cigarette racing livery that was in there. We all had it. If you're in your 30s now, you know what I'm talking about. But now I'm driving a modern Mitsubishi. The Evo's long gone. And they're still using the same acronyms. And they're not quite what they were on the Evolution cars. Because this active yaw control is essentially torque vectoring. But what it is, it only breaks the wheels. It doesn't actually shift the torque mechanically from left to right on that back axle. That's what the Mitsubishi system used to do. Doesn't on this car. The super all-wheel control, it's got two extra modes for gravel and snow. They don't really feel like they add that much of a difference. So you're just gonna leave it in normal because this is really a normal conventional crossover. Even though it has those really fancy algorithms and hardware underneath that's really pioneered. Again, Mitsubishi, excellent racing career. You don't really feel it in a car like this. So they could turn up the volume a little bit on this. You know, they, they advertise it, but I'm not feeling the whole history behind it. So personally, from a Mitsubishi fan of the 90s, yeah, this Eclipse Cross, it's, it's diluted. It's kind of bland in all the performance aspects, but for a normal driver who just wants to get around and finally get back to the office, it's fine. I took it on a trip, easy, it's comfortable, not all that quiet at highway speeds. It does get a bit loud with wind noise, especially. But really, there's not much to complain about. The seats are really comfortable. You could sit here all day and really not feel tired. Uh, that's kind of hard with cars in the under $30,000 glass. But I gotta say, the steering could be a little bit more accurate. I don't have as much on-center feel all the time, so I found myself correcting at those higher speeds. At lower speeds, though, it's no big deal. And the fuel economy is okay. 25 city, 26 highway with the all-wheel drive, or on the base ES with front-wheel drive, you can get up to 26 city and 29 highway. And those are okay numbers, they're not great. And I keep saying this, and I'll keep saying it again, if you want fuel economy, you really need to get a real hatchback or a small sedan, because you'll get up in the 30s, sometimes the 40s. So don't expect it with a little crossover, because you're just never gonna hit those numbers, even with the small engine. And we're stopped. Brake pedal feel a little soft at first, but good. Just good. Mitsubishi added one more cubic foot of cargo space. In total, with the seats down, there's 50, and 23 behind the seats. That's very small in the compact segment. CRV, Escape, Tucson, Rogue, they're all in the 60s and 70s. But these back seats have standard recline in nine positions. That's very handy for when you want more cargo or more comfort. And there's space back here. Not a whole lot, but it's decent. I've got outboard heated rear seats, and up here my own special moonroof with a powered shade. 
But overall, for both cargo and people, the Eclipse Cross feels more like a subcompact SUV, and yet the exterior dimensions are more like a compact, so kind of straddles both these worlds. Materials are good. Not great, but compared to what Mitsubishi was peddling several years ago, a whole new world. This gray leather is a new trim for 2022 and only on the SEL. Fit and finish are good. It's simple and it works. The seats are all comfortable. There's nice soft touch points for the elbows, including up here in the door. But the best part is what's really hard. Metal shift paddles. Maserati uses metal column paddles, and so does Mitsubishi. The only weird thing, there's a ton of blank switch plates, and my SEL trim is fully loaded with the touring package for 34 grand. So what else goes here? New for 2022 is this eight inch touchscreen. It's larger, has a newer interface. It still looks kind of dated, but let's be honest, that's not really a bad thing because these older systems usually are faster and simpler, and this one's no exception. Mitsubishi moved this screen two inches closer so it's easier to reach. There's actual volume and tuning knobs, and they removed the touchpad from the console. Apple CarPlay and Android Auto come with this larger screen. The base models use a seven inch. And if you get navigation, it's the first and only factory nav with what three words. That's supposed to be a new way of inputting and remembering addresses. So 197 Roast Meat Hill Road, Killingworth, Connecticut is uncool deep olive. Sounds so much better, doesn't it? Does it? The head-up display isn't worth much since it's mounted too low and doesn't project on the windshield, just this flip-up piece of laminate. The air conditioning is pretty weak and the drive modes for the SAWC don't amount to much, but pressing this button sure feels satisfying. Safety, forward emergency braking, lane departure warning, and auto high beams all come standard. Blind spot monitoring and adaptive cruise are optional and there's no semi-automated anything. Don't look for it, doesn't have it. The stereo, it's a no-name system, it's pretty bland. And that's about it with the Eclipse Cross. The Eclipse Cross starts at 23,395. It's a grand or so less than most competitors, even when fully loaded at 34,075 with destination. That includes a five year, 60,000 mile warranty and 10 year, 100,000 mile powertrain warranty. But it's kind of slow, limited on space and behind on the latest in-car technology. Among compact SUVs, it's good, it suffices. Among smaller compacts like the Nissan Rogue Sport and Honda HRV, it's still outclassed in space and tech. So for the same money, this whole package may be tougher to justify. You don't have to spend that much more money to get a much better Mitsubishi, the new 2022 Outlander. This Eclipse Cross, it's good, it deserves your consideration, but only if you can get one at a good price. I think if Mitsubishi improved the handling and the technology, they'd have a more enticing package to match the rest of the exterior style. As it stands, this 2022 model, yeah, it's a good improvement, but it still needs more improvement. What do you guys think? I'm not in the market for a new small crossover. You probably are, so you tell us. Keep watching the CarGurus YouTube channel, subscribe, go to CarGurus.com to browse more listings. We'll see you next time.